The murder of a royal is one of the most interesting things that can happen. Whether a royal was killed by public execution or by being stabbed in the back by a political ally, the plans behind their death have long been at the center of the most important and world-changing events in history. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about the 10 most shocking royal murders in history. First off at number 10, we have Blanche II of Navarra. Blanche II of Navarra was born in 1424, and she was the rightful heir to the throne of Navarra, a small kingdom between France and Spain. Blanche became Queen of Navarra in 1464, which her power-hungry father and sister didn't like. After her marriage ended up in a divorce without being consummated, her father and sister took this as an opportunity to put her behind bars. She died in 1464, and it's likely that one of her family members poisoned her. When Blanche died, her sister Eleanor became Queen of Navarra. This gave her father more power and control over the kingdom. At number 9, we have Eric V of Denmark. In 1286, a mysterious group of what seemed to be Franciscan monks rode into the village of Findera. They were going to the barn where King Eric V of Denmark and his group were sleeping after a hunting trip in the nearby woods. While the hunters were sleeping, the murderous monks crept into the barn and killed the king with knives. In the chaos that followed, the killers took off their monk outfits and ran away. King Eric was an unpopular tyrant with many enemies, and it wasn't clear who had asked for his death. In a paranoid atmosphere, the Danes quickly put nobleman Stig Anderson Veed behind bars because he hated Eric for sleeping with his wife. There was no proof that Veed was the one who killed the man, but he refused to accept such a verdict. Instead, he ran away to the island of Helm and became a pirate. For seven years, he raided and stole from ships off the coast of Denmark until he died. At number eight, we have Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria. The murder of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, who was the heir to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, was one of the most important royal killings in modern history. By 1914, the empire was made up of many different ethnic and national groups that were held together with stitches. Bosnia and the city of Sarajevo were taken over by the empire in 1908. This made Serbia very angry. So, there was a lot of tension in the air when Franz Ferdinand went to Sarajevo on June 28, 1914. While the Archduke and his wife Sophie were riding in an open-air motor car, a Slav nationalist walked up to their car, pulled out a gun, and shot the royal couple to death. Franz Ferdinand and Sophie's deaths, which were caused by 19-year-old Gavrilo Princip, set off World War I. Austria-Hungary went to war with Serbia because of the death of its heir. Due to their complicated webs of alliances, Germany, Russia, France, and Great Britain all joined the war after this declaration of war. And, as they say, the rest is history. Next up, at number 7, we have the Princes in the Tower. The sons of Edward IV and Elizabeth Woodville were born during the chaos of the Wars of the Roses. When their father died in 1483, they were thrown into even more political chaos. After his death, his brother, the Duke of Gloucester, took over as Lord Protector of his 12-year-old son and heir, Edward V. In the same year, the Duke put his nephews in the Tower of London right away, supposedly to protect them. No one ever saw them again. People quickly thought that they had been killed. And later, playwrights like Shakespeare made Richard III famous as a murderer. In 1674, a group of workers in the White Tower found the bones of two boys who were about the same age in a wooden trunk under the stairs. At number six, we have Alboin. Alboin was the king of the Lombards. He was one of the most powerful and interesting people in Europe in the 6th century. He led the Lombards south into Italy and helped them take over the northern part of the country. On the battlefield, no one could beat Alboin, but in the end, his violence came back to hurt him. He killed King Cunimund of the Gepids early in his rule and made a drinking cup out of his head. Then he made Rosemond, Cunimund's daughter, marry him against her will. During a drunken feast in June 572, he told Rosemond to drink happily with her father, made her drink wine from the skull cup. This was too far, so Rosemond started making plans to kill him right away. She pretended to be a servant and wooed Paradeo, who was Alboin's bodyguard. She then told Alboin who she really was and threatened to tell him about the affair if Paradeo didn't kill him. Alboin was sure to have him killed, so Paradeo agreed and killed the king in his bedroom with a sword. This was the last part of Rosemond's revenge. At number five, we have Alexander II of Russia. Alexander II was a reformer in Russia. Alexander freed the serfs, who were forced to work in Russia in the Middle Ages, in 1861, the same year that the American Civil War broke out over slavery. He also worked to change the way the Russian legal system worked. But Alexander the Liberator's changes weren't enough for a Russia that was split up. He could also be harsh and suspicious of political movements. On March 13, 1881, anarchists threw bombs at the emperor while he was in his carriage in St. Petersburg. He was 62 years old at the time. 
Alexander died an hour later. The assassination taught Alexander II's successors to be firm and conservative and not to trust the people. This lesson would affect the last few decades of the Romanov dynasty as emperors, turning the Russian people against them and eventually leading to a revolution. Moving on, at number 4, we have Tabin Shweti. Tabin Shweti was the king of Burma in the 1600s. During his reign, the Burmese kingdom grew and he started the Tungu Empire. But he liked wine too much, which made his competitors think he was weak and give them a chance. On the morning of the king's 34th birthday, April 30th, 1550, two swordsmen broke into the royal tent and killed him. The empire that Tabin Shweti had built over 15 years fell apart after he died. Each major governor declared himself independent, which led to wars and more tensions between different groups. People have said that Tabin Shweti's death was one of the most important turning points in mainland history. At number three, we have Mary, Queen of Scots. Mary, Queen of Scots had a strong claim to the English throne because she was the great-granddaughter of King Henry VII. Queen Elizabeth I of England at first welcomed Mary, but she soon had to put her friend under house arrest. This was because Mary was the focus of many English Catholic and Spanish plans to get rid of Elizabeth. In 1586, after Mary had been locked up for 19 years, there was a big plot to kill Elizabeth, and Mary was put on trial. She was found guilty of being an accessory and sentenced to death. Mary, Queen of Scots, was killed at Fotheringay Castle on February 8, 1587, because she had been a traitor. Her son, King James VI of Scotland, agreed to his mother's death, and he later became King of England, Scotland, and Ireland. At number two, we have Louis XVI and Queen Marie Antoinette. Louis XVI was a king who didn't know what he wanted and wasn't very mature. He took out international loans, which added to France's debt and helped start the French Revolution. By the middle of the 1780s, the country was close to going bankrupt bankrupt, which led the king to back radical and unpopular changes to the country's finances. In the meantime, Louis and Queen Marie Antoinette were seen as living a lavish and expensive lifestyle and not being able to solve France's growing problems. In August 1792, the monarchy was toppled, and in 1793, Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette were put to death by guillotine for treason in front of a cheering crowd. Finally, at number one, we have Empress Elizabeth of Austria. Empress Elizabeth of Austria was known for being beautiful and not wanting to be the center of attention. She didn't like pomp and circumstance, so when she went to Geneva, Switzerland, she used a fake name. But word quickly spread about her visit after someone from their hotel told people who she really was. On September 10, 1898, Elizabeth walked to catch a steamship to Montreux. She didn't have a group with her. There, an Italian anarchist named Luigi Luceni, who was 25 years old, walked up to Elizabeth and her servant and stabbed her with a needle file that was four inches long. Elizabeth died quickly, even though her tight corset stopped some of the blue. Leading. Even though Elizabeth seemed like an innocent target, she was kind and liked. So, unrest, shock, and grief spread through Vienna, and Italy was threatened with punishment. That's all for this video. Which murder did you find the most interesting? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content in the future. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.